Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're doing very good. In this video, we're gonna see different types of scheduling problems. The first one we're gonna see, the simplest of, of all the types we're gonna see, is called the permutation flow shop. And in this type of problem, there are two conditions that must be fulfilled. The first one is that all jobs have the same processing order through the machines, okay? And the second one is that each machine processes the jobs in the same order. We're gonna see this with an example. Imagine we have a workshop and in this workshop what we do is to work on different wooden items like tables, chairs, and so on. And the only two things that we do to each of them is to paint them and then to varnish them, okay? And you can think that we've got a kind of conveyor belt. So whenever we start processing an item, this item goes through the machines in the same order and the same order that we process the items in the first machine will be kept in the second machine and in M machines that we may have, okay? So how many possible solutions has the permutation flow shop? Well, basically the only thing we have to decide is in which order we're gonna sort the jobs initially because that order is going to be kept all throughout the machines, okay? And therefore, there are we've got n jobs and there are n factorial different ways in which we can sort them. So the number of possible solutions for the permutation flow shop is n factorial. And, and this is already a very complex problem because the because the factorial operation grows really fast, much faster than any exponential with a constant base. Just to give you a flavor of, of how big a factorial number can get very quickly, um, read this example which um, I really liked. Basically it says anytime you pick up a well shuffled deck, you're almost certainly holding an arrangement of cards that has never existed before and will likely never exist again. Why is that? Because there are 52 cards in a deck and there are 52 factorial ways of sorting those cards. And this number is roughly 10 to the power of 68. And just to give you an idea of how big that number is, the number of atoms in the Earth, in our planet, is estimated to be about 10 to the 50. 10 to the 50. So basically even with 42 cards, the possible ways you can arrange them is roughly or is, is bigger than the number of atoms in, in the Earth. Okay, the next problem we're gonna see, which is called the regular flow shop, shares the first condition with the permutation sh uh, flow shop. The first condition is that all jobs have the same processing order through the machines, okay? All the jobs have to go through the painting machine and then through the varnishing machine. That is why this is still a flow shop. But the second condition is different and now the order um, of the jobs in each of the machines can be different, okay? You can think that there is a buffer here and here we can rearrange the order in which we're going to process the jobs in each machine. And what's the number of possible solutions here? So basically, we can sort the jobs in any order we like at any machine, okay? So basically, we could sort them uh, in n factorial different ways at the first machine, then in n factorial different ways at the second machine, and, and so on. And since we have m machines, then the number of possible solutions would be m factorial raised to the mth power. The next problem we're gonna see, which is slightly more general, is the job shop. And in the job shop, each job has its own routine, okay? It's the problem we, we saw in a previous video. Basically, now each of these components is gonna be processed in a different 
a first machine. So the first component will go first to the drilling machine, the second component will go first to the milling machine, and the third component has to go first to the grinding machine. And here, if, if you think about it, there are also m factorial raised to the mth power possible solutions. Um, there are even more complex problems like the open shop where here the order in which the tasks of each job um, must be done is not is not predetermined. You may change that order for, for a particular job. And even more complex problems are dynamic problems where jobs are arriving in, in time dynamically. Okay? But in this course, we're going to focus on, on the simplest problems, problem of all within the scheduling problem literature, which is the permutation flow shop, which is already really complex. It's an MP hard problem, and we've seen how quickly the number of possible solutions um, grows. Let, let's, let's see it with an example. Okay, so here we've got five jobs we want to process and we've got four machines, okay? And this matrix is giving us the processing time of each job in each machine. So basically, job one has to stay or has to be processed in machine one for five time units. Then in machine two for four time units, in machine three for four time units again, and in the last machine, in machine four, job one has to, has to be for three time units. And the same for the different jobs. Okay, this is a flow shop problem. So once we fix an order for the jobs, and in this case, we're gonna work with this order, one, two, three, four, five, that order has to be kept um, throughout all the machines. So what we have down here is a Gantt chart for, for this uh, order of jobs. And as you can see, job one, which is the red one, is the first one to enter in all machines. Job two, which is the blue one, is the second one to enter in, in all machines because this is a permutation flow shop. And so let, let, let's look at it. So basically we process first job one. Job one goes to the first machine, which is the first row in this Gantt chart, and stays there for five time units. Then it goes to the second machine. When it finishes there after four time units, it goes to the third one, and then it goes to the fourth one where it stays for three time units, okay? In machine one, machine one, right after it has finished with job one, it can process job two because job two is already available. And job two will stay machine one for five time units. And then it will go to machine two. Why didn't machine two start processing job two immediately after having finished um, job one? Well, because job two wasn't available. Job two was still being processed in machine one. And that is why we've got this gap. And that is why we've got these gaps in, in this Gantt chart. And imagine what we would like to do is to find um, an order that minimizes the time that it takes us to process the five jobs. That time for this order is 34 time units. And um, what we can see is that if we change the order, for instance, we, we sort the jobs in according to this sequence, three, five, four, one, two, then the time that it takes us to process all the jobs is greater. Now it would be 36. So basically the, the order in which we process the jobs in a permutation flow shop can can have an influence in, in different things and in particular in how long it takes us to process all the jobs. Okay, this would be an example of a generalized job shop. Why did I write a generalized job shop? Well, because in this example, um, there are some jobs like here, job two, that have to go to machine two twice, okay? 
and that is why it's it's a generalized version of of the job shop problem that we've been talking about this is an example that we're going to work on in in some other videos so with this we'll finish this video and i very much look forward to seeing you in the next one see you later cheers